Today's Tanya for the 23rd of Sivan, Chav Gimel Sivan, is in Perek Zayin, Chapter 7 of Shari Yichud Vemunna. It's on Daf Pe Gimel Amadalif. The number at the bottom of the page is 314. The beginning of the new paragraph. Vihine Mikan Yesh Lahavin. Now, from this that we said before, we can understand Shigigas Miktas Chachamim Beinehem, the mistake, the error that some sages who were scholars in their own eyes, Hashem Yechaper Ba'adam, may God forgive them for this mistake because it's a question of understanding and believing in Ahdus Hashem, which is a mitzvah. V'yadaita hayem, as he started off in in Shari Yichud Vemuna, the the phrase the pasuk that you should know today and take to heart that in heaven above and on earth below there is nothing besides God. So may God forgive them for their mistake. Sheshagu v'tau biyunam bekisve harizam, where they erred, they erred and they made a mistake in the in, in the understanding of the writings of the Ariza. The Hevinu, and they misunderstood Inyan Hat Tzimtzum Hamuskar Sham, the idea of Tzimtzum that is mentioned there in the writings of the Arizal, and they and they took it Kipshute, they took it too literal. And that is Shahakadish Baruchu Silik Atmeu Mukusechas Vishal Me'elam Haze that God took himself away God forbid, and left himself out of this world. Only they do believe, of course, that God controls the world and runs the world and there's no place devoid of him. But this, God's presence everywhere, they understood to mean or misunderstood that God observes from above with individual attention Al kol hayitzurim kulam over all that he created ashabashamayim imal valaret valaret mitachas and that's how they understand the presence of God that there is nothing besides God in the heavens above and on earth below in that he observes and and controls and directs all events and all creation from heaven all the way down to earth but he does this from a distance he is not within the, the, the physical condition within the physical world but, cre- but affects it from the outside as for example the difference between a person being affected by Seichel so that if a person learns how to write teaches his hand to write to write neatly so the intelligence or some amount of intelligence becomes absorbed in the hand so that we could say that there is wisdom in the hand itself. Although it is not the place of wisdom, the place of wisdom is in the brain, but through effort you can bring wisdom into the hand as well. So that when the hand learns to write, the hand actually has changed. It's been influenced, something has been added to it. It now has the capacity of intelligent writing. On the other hand, when will affects the hand because a person wants to move his hand and so he moves it willfully of course it affects the hand because will is everywhere and controls every part of the body but when will moves the hand the hand gains nothing from it because will affects the hand from a distance whereas wisdom intelligence affects the, uh, the hand from within so that even after the hand has been moved by the will, we don't say that the will is in the hand. In the same way, with with this divine providence, whether God is present within the physical condition, or he controls it and guides it from above, everybody recognizes and everybody understands that God controls everything, and without God nothing could happen, because to believe that something can happen without God is literal idol worship. That there's an independent function, there's an independent will other than God's. So everybody knows that nothing happens without God. The 
question is, what happens? Happens as a, as a result of an effect from a distance, where God is distant from the physical being, but affects it from above, controls it from above, or whether God is actually in the physical condition itself. So they, they misunderstood the idea of Tzimtzum and, and believed that Tzimtzum meant that God was not present in the physical thing, affected it, and controlled it from the outside. Now, beside the fact that it is impossible to apply the concept of Tzimtzum in its literal sense to God, the, the, to describe literal symptom to God would be applying a physical property to God who is infinitely removed from the physical condition. In other words, only in the physical world do things have limitations of space where, where something is appropriate in one place but not in another. As, for example, intelligence is appropriate in, in the human mind, but it is not appropriate in a stone. To say that God is more appropriate in the infinite worlds than he is in the finite world is literally attributing to God a physical attribute. So besides that, Afgam Zais, another thing is that that they're not making any sense at all. What they're saying is not sensible. Since they themselves are believers, the children of believers, their faith in God is correct. And that is that God knows all that He created in this lowly physical world, and he observes them and watches them, which means that he is aware of them. He is aware of these lowly physical creations. The Alkain ein yidiyase. The Alkarchach ein yidiyase eisam mesifa beiribui v'chidush. And we must believe or conclude that God's knowing them does not increase his knowledge, doesn't bring any increase in God, as we said in yesterday's year. And nothing new is introduced into God when God knows the physical beings. And why is it that there's nothing, nothing added and nothing new introduced? Because his knowledge of the world is with himself. Then his essence and his knowledge are all one, as we said earlier, and therefore if his knowledge is in the world, if he is aware of the world, then he is present in the world himself, because his knowledge and himself are the same. Therefore it is not logical in reference to God to say that he knows the creation, but he is removed from it. And this is what is meant in the Tikkunim, in the Zaya, where it says, the less that there is no place devoid of him, not in the higher worlds and not in the lower worlds. In other words, it was, it's wrong to interpret this statement that there is no place devoid of him, in that he is effective in all places, that he affects every place from a distance. That's not what it meant. It can't be what it meant. What it means is that God himself is present in every place, including also the lowly physical world. And in the part of the, of the Zeha attributed to Moshe Rabbeinu, called Raya Mehemna, Parsha Pinchas, he says, He who tough is bekula, the less man, the tough is bay. He contains everything and nothing contains him. He surrounds the world, he fills the world with nothing goes out from his domain 
Everything is within him. When he fills the world, he brings together those things that belong together, uh, uh, the, the one type to its, to its similar type, that which belongs with it. Higher and lower, and there is no togetherness, there's no cohesion in the four elements with, of which the world is made. Only when God is present among them, then there's a togetherness, a cohesion among them. Without him, there is none. All of this is from the Raya Mehemna. So what we see from here is that God is effective in the world in two ways. One is that he is above the world, he encompasses it, and nothing encompasses him. On the other hand, he also fills the world, and he actually affects the condition of the world, the properties of the world, to the point where the four elements would not be con- contained together, would not be bound together, which makes up all physical substances without the presence of God. And this is what we were saying earlier in, in Shara Yichud Ven Munah, that the word of God not only creates the world, but gives life to the world, to create the world can be done from a distance. God doesn't have to be part of the world in order to create it. On the contrary, he creates it by being above it. But God also gives life to exist to creation, and to give life means that God is part of the property, or is the essence of the property of the physical being. So that which makes the physical being what it is, is the word of God. So it's not that God gives existence, and physical existence by creating. And in creating physical existence, there is some law in nature that dictates that a stone should be a stone, a tree should be a tree, and an animal should be an animal. The fact that this is a tree and this is a stone, this is an animal, that is also as a result of God's involvement and imminence in in this physical thing. So God is not only the creator of the world, he is also the substance of the world. And what he means to say, by less man de tof his bay, that there is nothing that can comprehend him. That can, he grasps and encompasses everything, and nothing encompasses him. This means there is nothing that can comprehend with its intelligence. Not only from human intelligence, but even the higher divine intelligence, the intelligence of angels, cannot comprehend God's essence. As he writes in the Tikkunim, Stima the Chol Stimin Veles Machshava Tvisa Bach Klau, that God is the most concealed of all concealed, the most hidden of hidden things, and no one can grasp Him at all. What does grasp mean? To understand, to comprehend. V'kam betachtainim, and also in the lower worlds, Af al Gav di Ihu Mimalikol Almin. Even though God fills the world, and he is, he is the essence and the substance of the world, and not creating it from a distance, so you would think that God should be comprehensible, comprehensible in the world. So he says that, It's not like the soul, which is in the body. Shehi nitfes es teich aguf ad she mispol u mekabele shinuyim mishinuye aguf v'tzare the neshama enters into the body and becomes contained, encompassed by the body, meaning to say that the that the soul becomes affected or is affected and is changed, experiences changes by the influence of the body. As, for example, when the body is in pain, mehakois, from a, from a blow, or, the, or when the body is cold, or when the body is burnt, by, by a, the heat of a fire, all of this affects the neshama. Ash'ein came back, whereas with God, 
God is not affected by the changes in the world from winter to summer, from day to night, darkness doesn't darken. For God, and uh, night and day are the same. So unlike the neshama, where the neshama enters into the body and becomes the substance of the body, but as a result of this, the neshama is also affected by the body, with God, however, although he enters into the physical thing, and he is the substance of the physical thing, he is its definition and he is its essence, yet he is not affected by the conditions or the experiences of the physical. Because he is not encompassed, he's not grasped by the world, although he grasps and, is en- and encompasses the world. Afalgav de Memalalain, even though he fills them. So this is the difference between divine presence and and finite presence, that God is present in his full infinite state in the physical condition itself, and yet is not affected by the physical condition. Whereas the finite Nishama, when the Nishama enters the body and enters it in, a, in an internal way that it becomes part and becomes part of the of the body to the point where it's hard to tell where the body ends and the soul begins because the soul is essential in the body and doesn't only affect it from a distance the result of that is that it works the other way too that the, that the body's properties the, the body's condition have some bearing, have some effect on the neshama. The neshama becomes vulnerable to the body. Whereas with God, even though he is within the world and he is part of the world and he is the essence of the world, he is the substance of the, of the individual creation, and yet he is not subject to the changes and to the conditions and the properties of the physical. In today's Hayyam game, for the 23rd of Sivan, the Rebbe writes that in a reply, in an answer to a question asked in Yechidus during the winter of 1874 or 75, my grandfather said to my father, the Rebbe Marash said to the Rebbe Rashab, that the Yetzirah is called animal soul. And it doesn't mean necessarily that the animal soul is a dumb animal. At times, in fact, it's like a fox, the most cunning of animals. <clears throat> and it takes great wisdom to recognize its schemes and its tricks. At other times, the Yetzirah can clothe itself in the form, in the, in the garb of a sincere, straightforward, humble tzaddik who, is, who, who has fine character traits. The animal soul shows itself in each person according to his individual character will tempt each person according to the character. One person may suddenly experience a longing to study Hasidus or to contemplate deeply on some Hasidic idea. And the truth is that this is nothing more than the Yetzirah's advice and the the animal soul's trick to prevent him from davening or other sort of Aveda that is more relevant and more immediately necessary for this individual. Take this as a principle and remember it always. Any matter that is effective towards or actually leads to active aveda, to active service, and then is confronted with an opposition of any sort, there's some contradicting thought that comes up. Even if the contradicting thought and suggestion appears to be very noble, that opposition, the opposing idea, is the animal soul's suggestion. My father concluded that until then, I hadn't known that there's such a thing as a religious afrum yetzahara. And and to hear that there's yet a Hasidic yetzahara, that was altogether new.